This is Irma Grego from Senior Perspective. Today we have the honor of being in the garden of Carolyn Johnson on Center Church Road. And this is Carolyn Johnson. And she does painting and has many, many other interests in that. So perhaps you could tell us, uh, where did you come from before you came to McMurray and how long ago has that been? Uh, I grew up in Illinois, Lake Bluff, Illinois. And we came here to Pennsylvania in 47 and then we lived here in McMurray for about 35 years. Uh -huh. This Pennsylvania was the last state I wanted to, or Pittsburgh was the last city I wanted to be in, and <laughs> now we won't leave it. <laughs> right, so um, when did you start painting? Oh, probably my, when I came here, uh, I got, I have my education in art, a degree from the University of Wisconsin, and then uh, I did do a little bit of teaching when I came to the township, but then I felt that since I, I started doing piano teaching, and I would teach all day in the school system and come home and take care of my three children and then teach four piano students, and so I decided I better stick to one or the other. So I did do the piano teaching, and, uh, but then I continued as to do my watercolors on my own, but then I started a little group of, of watercolor painters called the Monday Painters. Uh huh. Well, let's talk a little bit about your Monday Painters. And oh, I'm just admiring your beautiful flowers here. They are, oh, they're out of this world. The colors are great. Thank you. Thank you. These, uh, these flowers came mostly from Dan Taw's garden. He lives over in Elm Grove Drive. And he is a master of hybridizing flowers. He has 2,000 variety. 2,000 2, varieties? 2,000. Are there that many? <laughs> oh, there, are, there probably are 35,000 in the, in the country. Of the lilies? Yes, different kinds. You can, you, can cha you, can, you can hybridize and you can mix these flowers together and make little seeds and grow new plants. You can oh. do that. It's called hybridizing. Uh -huh. And uh, he asked me to paint a painting for him of one of the lilies. It probably was the one over there, the Dan Ta lily. And uh, what, after I painted it, he said, do you want me to pay you or do you want lilies? And I said, I want lilies. <laughs> so I probably got $300 of lilies in each one of these gardens. And then uh, he's a, just a wonderful man. But uh, you asked about the Monday painters. Yes. This group of people, it started at Trinity Methodist Church and they were going to have a bazaar one day. And in a weaker moment, I said, I will be chairman of the art booth. But then I thought, now, how am I going to get all these painters together? So uh, I decided I would have a class. And I started a class. And I told the, the people that if they presented a painting to be in the bazaar, I didn't, wouldn't charge them for the class. Well, everybody gave me a lovely <laughs> paintings. And they were so excited. And so the bazaar was over with, and they said, well, now what? Now what should we do? And can't we keep going? So we've been going for 27 years. My goodness. <laughs> it's under the auspices of Trinity Methodist Church. We meet in the Scout Building at, nine, at 10 o'clock every Monday. Rain or shine. If it rains, we go to the Scout Building. If it shines, we go outside. Uh -huh. so. Wonderful. And uh, you do your paintings at any point or whatever interests anybody? or. We, uh, we went to, we exhibited our paintings at Christie's one time. Well, I mean, when you actually do the painting. Yes. I mean, do you go to different sites? Yes. The... We go downtown Pittsburgh. We went to Station Square and sat on the little, the little benches at the station and did the pictures of Pittsburgh. And then we go to little covered bridges and we go to, oh. to, to uh, we go on overnights too. We've been down to West Virginia to Blackwater Falls. Uh -huh. And uh, then we take our husbands along too. <laughs> so it's, it's a lively group. It's, it changes from year to year. People leave and then other people come. And it's a group of painters that share with each other and they're just a great group. Oh, it sounds very interesting. Yes. And so it'd be something nice to belong to. Well, anybody can learn. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> sure you can. So, um, you were talking about your children. You said you had three. Would you mind telling us uh, where they are and uh, something about them? Uh, we have three children, Judy, Jeff, and Janet. And Judy lives in New Jersey. She has a 21-year-old, our grandson. Uh, Jeffrey lives in Arizona. 
and he has two girls. They're twins. They're 16, and they're going to come in a couple weeks. Oh, wonderful! And then our daughter Janet has. Uh, she has two dogs. We two call, dogs. We call them our grand dogs. <laughs> Each one is a Kuvaz. They're great big white dogs. Each one weighs 110 pounds. Oh my goodness. And people really watch them as they walk down the street with these two huge, gorgeous dogs. And so they're, so three, our kids are in three corners of the United States. Right, uh-huh. <laughs> so, well, let's talk a little bit more about your uh, art league and that. When did you join the McMurray Art League? Well, I or think- Or did you form it? I did. Okay, the great. First <laughs> the first meeting was in my dining room. Um, I had been teaching uh, summer, summer classes for the children, and Phil Joyce, the man who was helping me, the teacher at the school, said, you know what this township needs? He says, you need an art league. And I said, all right, let's do it. So the art league was formed in our dining room, and it's been going for almost 35 years now. Oh. And it's a, a wonderful league. Um, I was president about four years ago and uh, it's been growing by leaps and bounds and they have wonderful classes and they have wonderful programs I'm really proud of it very good it sounds like a very nice another very nice group <laughs> they, are. Uh -huh. they are so um, tell us a little something about how you actually paint a picture or should I say a painting <laughs> all right um, watercolor is done in so many different ways this one is here was done with an underpainting. You wet the whole paper with a great big brush and you wet the whole paper and this is the fun part. And then you <clears throat> take and get some color and you add it in different places. Keep putting different colors on wherever you want and then, grad then you let it dry and then you start to put in with a smaller brush the things that you want. Um, something that you want to accent or something? Is yes. That what, uh... I've been doing what they call negative painting a great deal. I went to an artist a couple years ago and um, she was, um, I'll get some more green here. I'll show you how you go behind, behind the picture. You go behind the picture with your whatever you want and then take a bigger brush that's wet but doesn't have any color on it. And then you go into these so that you smooth out the edge. Well, that did, I got too dry. When, it's, when you're outside, everything dries so fast. You have to be very careful. So I don't know if you can see if any of this is coming through. You can drop color in and it'll move around. You can drop red in, which makes something very deep. See how that's getting oh, very yeah. deep underneath there. And that will be the background. And the other side will be similar. And when you, when you do this, it makes your, uh, your picture pop out. It's more or less like it's outlined then, is that right? That's right, that's right. And that's what you call the fun part. We're going to be, go behind this and it makes, it makes it come out. It's called negative painting. And if I want to smooth out all these things, I take my brush and just go right at the oh, edge. look at that. And it smooths out. Some say that watercolor is a very, they're, they're so scared of watercolor, they say that, you know, once you put it on, you can't do anything, you can't take it off. But you can. Now I could take this off, I could scrub it, or I could dab it. Dabbing takes it out, and I could scrub it again. So whatever would be appropriate, whatever I would want. I think I would want to leave it back in though. <laughs> because it feels good, it feels better. Yeah. Oh, it looks better too, yes. Uh -huh. But the flower will, will start to come out then. And we'll. It does. And I'll probably drop color in at different places. And eventually, I have to decide what I'm going to do with the leaves. It's going to be a lot of intricate work, but it's um, it's worth it. Well, look how it really accented the petals on that flower yeah. there. Yeah. 
Yeah, it, uh, this looks so plain compared to, to that. I won't, I won't do it all. I won't outline the whole thing. You have to entertain. You have to go dark and light, and, and you keep on having different shapes and different, and uh, you let the, let the picture breathe. You let it move. Well, now, before you even start any picture or any painting, you draw something on there oh, then? Yes. So that you have something to follow by. Right. If you don't have a good drawing, your, uh, yeah. drawing on, I'll yeah. try to take them out. I'll try to erase them when I'm, I'm finished. But well, if you don't like have... It looks like you've done so there. Yeah, I all. took pretty much of this out. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a good basis of a good drawing underneath, you, you won't have a good painting. I mean, some just start and just paint and fool around and stuff. But if you want to do anything that's recognizable, you can do, use your... Uh, if you don't you, have direction, in other words, uh, for that's right. A, that's right. A goal. <laughs> There's all kinds of, all kinds of uh, ways of painting, and uh, but watercolor I find is the most exciting medium. Now these little dots that are here, that's done with water. I just shake water on them. I use two, usually use two brushes, and you shake, shake water on. If I wanted to do that now, it'll probably start to appear pretty soon. You can use salt, you can scrape it, you can scrape it. Now, it, it has to be at the right consistency. That didn't work out, but that is a possibility. You scrape it and you shift it around, you pick it up with your brush, do lots of things with your watercolors. And I oh, think... Are these droppings, is that what's showing up now, what you just put on there? No, they were, uh, that was they too were dry there. to do anything. Oh. It was too dry to do anything. But mm -hmm. that's what I did before. Yeah, I didn't notice those before. Yeah, and then this is color that I use. I put color on my picture and then I hit that and I, it makes those little dots. Mm -hmm. You've seen that in paintings. Yes. Well, I wondered how they did it. <laughs> no, no. Now, you're getting a lesson. I'm getting a well, lesson. It you a thing. <laughs> <laughs> It, art is, is really a fascinating medium, and uh, people that come into the class, we have a good time uh, learning to, to see. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We learn to see it in, in different way. I mean, and to, to put it down, you know, we learn to what we're, uh, and we learn how to do it. I mean, you have to have the painted a certain dryness to, uh, so come to the class and we'll, we'll give you another course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, uh, what is your most favorite type of paint? I'm uh, not type of painting, but subject. Well, probably painting. flowers. Flowers. Are. But now I'm getting into houses. Oh, really? I did, I did the little old um, house over in Venetia. It's called the, uh, the house historical. <clears throat> the right house? Pa yeah, the right house. Oh, yeah. Yes, uh -huh. yes. I did that one. And I did, uh, I did a Sue Richards dance class. And so I'll do whatever, if people have ideas, come to me and we'll. Mm -hmm. Well, back about the Wright House, I remember when a family lived there and went to school, when I went to school there. Uh, really? Well, I went to school over here at the, yeah, where was the middle school. Yeah. And that, but uh, the old middle school. Uh -huh. And uh, they were going to Venetia and everybody from Venetia from eighth grade came over to high school over to McMurray then. Right. But I remember the family that lived there. And that's, oh. uh, that goes way back. <laughs> yes. We sat, <clears throat> I took my class over there and we sat inside the house and did a picture of the old spinning wheel and the old, uh, the, uh, all the herbs that are drying by the fireplace. Mm. And it was, it was beautiful. So I've been doing lots of pictures and, uh, but now I'm going to, there, there's going to be a tour called the Wesley, the Wesley Foundation over in Upper St. Clair is going to have a house tour in October. And they asked me if I would do a house, if I would paint a house. So I was asked if I would do Joe and Shirley Hardy's house. Joe Hardy, you know? Yes. The, of 84 Lumber. Uh -huh. And uh, so I went over to his house the other day and took photographs, and, and it's going to be interesting. Oh, and you'll do the painting from the photograph then? Right. Oh. Right. Uh-huh. So that ought to prove interesting. <laughs>
Well, it, it's such a big house, and I've got to get it on a little tiny little piece of paper. <laughs> but, Is that the one with the waterfall through it? Is that the yes. one you're talking about? Have you been there before? No, but I wanted, they were closed when they, were, they weren't having a tour when I was up there. Oh. And, uh, but I've heard so much about it. And well, the Wesley, the Wesley Foundation. Is, it, is that what they call it, Wesley Foundation? I don't know. Um, they're having their house tour in October, and I'll, mm -hmm. I'll let you know when it is so okay. we can go. Good. That'll be fine. Uh -huh. uh, Carolyn, can you tell us a little more about your artwork? Well, um, I went a couple of months ago to a very good artist. His name is Bill Vershek, and I really was so pleased with what he helped me do. He helped me focus in on what I really wanted to say in pictures and bring it out because I was a little bit, you know, very faint and very gentle in my painting and he brought me out a lot. And um, one nice thing, we're going to have him come to the Monday Painters in October. He's going to come and give classes, so if anybody wants to come, that would be very nice. Call me. But um, I, I really like to paint flowers. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the thing that I really enjoy. I've, I'll do all kinds of other things, but uh, that is the nicest one, yes. Well, I agree with you because I think that there's so much to flowers and that so much to see in them and all that to be brought out. And that's, uh, uh, perhaps you'd like to take us into your studio now so we could see some of your other paintings? Would love to. Well, here we are in my studio. This is where I do a lot of my work. These are some paintings that I've done over the years. This painting down here was done in one of, in one of the classes. Uh, this is out in Colorado. Um, this one over here is, of all things, it's the big old barn behind Miller's hardware store. With this lady, I asked the lady if we could go up in her property, and she said yes. So we all stood up, we all got our materials, and we all went up there and sat. And uh, then there's another painting over here when we went to what they call West End Overlook. And it was a beautiful morning, and we sat there, and we had a wonderful time uh, doing our painting. I guess there were about 10 people in the class at that time. This is one of the very first paintings I did in my art class. If you, if I don't know whether you know about this eight-sided barn down on Route 19, but it's a, it's a landmark. But they remodeled it about 10 years ago, but this is done before the remodeling. And it was just beautiful and old with the hay coming out of the barn, and it was a gorgeous thing. Of course, we got chased out of the, out of the field by an, a cow, but uh, we, <laughs> we managed. So artists do have to go through problems. There's another painting over here on this wall that I'm very pleased with. It's uh, a scene from Colorado, and uh, it, it turned out nicely. This is one painting I won't sell. This painting of Pittsburgh, I entered in a show, and I won a prize. I was, it was the McMurray Art League, so I was very pleased with this. This is called the bridge, the eight, figure eight bridge, and we sat on the benches at Station Square with the trains going by in front of us, and uh, it was a delightful day. And uh, but uh, I'll always I had such a difficult time with the with the eight in the bridge, the it, the figure eight, and to get everything in the proper perspective. <clears throat> but it was interesting to do. Now there's a painting over here on the other wall <clears throat> that was done when I was up in the state of Maine. I studied with a man. Uh, this is Pemaquid Point. Uh, I sat there right, on, at, right at that beach, and I uh, painted those rocks. It was interesting. Uh, the name of the artist was Carlton Plummer, and uh, Marlene Humphreys from the township, and I went up to take his class for a whole week. This is a picture of um, Sedona, Arizona. I went out to a class with Raleigh Kinney, and uh, we sat out there on the hillside, and uh, this is a picture of teapot. Of course, it doesn't look like a teapot, because you'll have to look at it from another side to see the teapot, but it was a very lovely picture. And uh, I enjoyed my time uh, out there with him. 
This is another one of Pemaquid Point up in Maine. I sat on those hard rocks uh, painting this picture, but it was interesting. Uh, this is a, another a painting I did with Carlton Plummer up there in Maine, a very good artist. We're back in Carolyn's garden now, and uh, she has some very interesting stories about her lilies. So perhaps you might like to hear the uh, different comments she has to make also. Carolyn, how about you taking it from here? Well, these lilies are the old-fashioned day lilies. Actually, they're not old-fashioned. The old-fashioned one was the one that was in the, in the field. Uh, this is a double one, but the ones in the field is a single one. Now, from every one of these, the old ones, came these new variety. And the way they came was that, that hybridizers uh, worked with these lilies, and they would take the little thing with the pollen, and they would go to another plant, and they would rub it on this part, the pistil part of the plant. And then when that lily closes up that night, the hybridizer leaves the lily alone, and it will form a little ball. And inside this green ball will be all these seeds. And the seeds will form a plant that's a combination of this plant and that plant. And the, the lilies are day lilies. They only last for one day. Can you believe this? These glorious big blooms will be closed up by 11 o'clock tonight. And they're a good example for our lives, too, because they only last one day. So each day that we have, we should live it to the fullest and enjoy each day. Thank you, Carolyn, for having us in your beautiful garden and showing us all these interesting points on, uh, paint, on water coloring. Welcome to Senior Perspective. Uh, this is Irma Grego, and uh, we are at the uh, home of uh, Dan Tao on uh, Elm Grove Drive. And I'd like to, you to, to introduce to you Dan Tao. And he's going to tell us all about his daylilies, which should be very interesting. So, uh, Dan, it's your turn now. Can you well, tell us about your daylilies? Yes, a little bit. If there's anything you want to know, I might be able to tell you. I got into this as a hobby. In fact, I had my first daylily back in... 25. I was going to college over at California State Teachers College at that time, and my roommate lived on a farm in uh, Somerset County, and his mother had an old, old daylily, one of the early ones up there, and he gave that to me along with some peonies, and uh, it was a small yellow, bloomed very, very early. I no longer have it, but I kept that for a long time. And when I left the farm, and I had to keep my fingers in the soil, <laughs> so I gardened a lot, and I started to buy daylilies, and uh, here we are. At one time, I had over 1,200 named varieties here. Oh, my. I don't have that many now, but my hobby is hybridizing. And uh, so I uh, have quite a large patch of uh, my own seedlings that I have started from seed. And it's very interesting. It keeps me going at 88. That's keeps me wonderful, going. and it is a beautiful hobby. Well, thank you. I mean, you. this is really, I'm, you can, art is on paper, but this is nature. Well. And nobody can uh, compete with that. <laughs> well, I'm glad you like it. But we have, fr from little inch and a half daylilies up to 10 inches. Across? Uh, yes, across. All colors from, there are no whites. We are, have very clear, or very near whites, no blues. They're working for that. If anybody gets that, they've hit the jackpot. But other colors we have from uh, creams, golds, purples, lavenders, pinks, and of course, pinks are my specialty. And these all came from the old, the original daylily. Yes, yes, there were three, as I understand it, were three plants brought from China way back. In fact, they try to say that Marco Polo, back in the 1200s, brought some plants back from China when he was on the spice roots. And uh, the settler, the early settlers that come from Europe had to bring something with them. At that time, Fulva, the daylily that's out along the road, they had to bring that with them. But there was that, a, a muddy red, a muddy pink, and a yellow. And from that, we've, they've hybridized, so we have all these different colors, sizes, and shapes. 
That is wonderful. I, I can't believe, I mean, I have just the ordinary ones and maybe an apricot. Uh, perhaps you would uh, explain about this uh, hybridization, is that what you call yes. it? Yes, I would be happy to tell you. There are two parts, well, there are a number of parts, but two important parts in hybridizing are the male and female part. The female part is called the pistil, and the male part carries the pollen. Now, if I wanted to make a cross on two different ones, we hardly ever cross on the same thing. That's called inbreeding, and you know what happens when you inbreed. Mm -hmm. So I would take the pollen here and dust it on a different one, like this, hit the pollen on that female part, the pistil. Then it takes about 50 days for that seed pod to ripen. Now, when it ripens, if you want to keep them separate, uh, you would break that off when it starts to turn brown, the seed pod. And uh, if you want to keep them separate, you might get from five to 20 seeds in a pod. Oh. And if they grow, you would call those siblings or sister seedlings. Now, interesting enough, the, uh, you might uh, plant, or you might cross, rather, uh, two reds or two yellows. But because of the background, like our backgrounds in us, some of us are redheads in the same family as the dark-haired ones. So you might get mostly whatever you cross with, but you still get some outcrosses, out colors rather, yellow or red or a mixture. And that's what we're looking for now. There are so many good ones on the market. We're looking for something that's very unique, different difficult to do. <laughs> well, the predominant color would be the outside edge, is that right? This is the pink. These are the petals, and the smaller ones are the sepals. And yeah, this is a predominant color. Now, a good many of them, have, we like to have them with green throats, if you notice. The early ones had an old orange throat, and especially on a red one or a pink one, it didn't blend in too well. Mm -hmm. So they've been working. It wasn't me, it come before I started. We now have those nice green throats or a yellow throat or green blending out into the yellow with your predominant color, whatever the petals might be. Do you want to start? Well, perhaps maybe we could see your uh, seedling bed. Well, I'd be happy to show them to you. Okay. So come on, we'll go. That's beautiful. Mm hmm. And I have anything from, I think there's a tiny one here. Yeah, here it is. Here, it's, this oh, is a tiny that's one. That's all the bigger it'll get. Yeah, I have some even smaller than that, about an inch and a half across. That's probably two inches. Do the bees? Are you taking us? <laughs> do the bees uh, interfere with anything you're doing here? The bees will cross, but we try to get out early in the morning when it's cool before the bees start. And you can see I have this one cross. See the yellow? Oh, yeah, I see that little yeah. thing on Yeah, and it. the ones mm -hmm. I like to make crosses, I'll pick out certain varieties to what I think are uh, going to be interesting. And we're looking for something different than what's on the market. There's so many sure. solid pinks. What did you cross this one with? I don't know. I don't keep track of the crosses. <laughs> I just pick out something I like. And well, then what do you now, do? I, Let that die and then just yeah, it close up? Yeah, and then it'll form a seed pod. I, uh, I did use this one for seeding, for uh, hybridizing. But Very it, interesting. This is a different one here. That is pretty. I like that. Yeah. Well, uh, you, if you that's look... That's almost white, Dan. Yeah, that's very near white. Not white, but getting very close. They're either white on the pink side or the cream side. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they have a pink flush in them or a cream flush in them. But some of them are getting fairly close to white. Yeah, that one's almost white. Yeah, that's pretty good. We're You're looking for make it. we're looking for ruffles too. We like to have them uh, very good form, flat if you can, like like this one here. You see how nice that is. Is that what you mean by a ruffle? Well, the ruffles are on the edge. Can you see this one has a little more ruffle? That has ruffles. Oh on it. yeah, I see yeah. what you mean. And uh, some of them are very, very ruffled, and others turn back. This is a, what we call a biscuit form. It rolls back. Oh, uh -huh. that does it naturally. It's not because it's the sun. No, that's God made it that way. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. So uh, now you've got a lot of these that have been uh, hybridized, then, huh? Yes, I, I I've made a number of crosses in here. 
Uh, I'm trying some of my own seedlings. I have a lot of name varieties, and some of them are rather expensive. You can pay as much as $300 for a plant. But uh, since I have so many nice colors myself, and it's my hobby, I'm using my own kids, so-called kids here. Mm -hmm. A friend of mine uh, named that for me. And uh, the, we have another and a similar to that called the Polish Prince, named for a friend of mine who is Polish. But can you see the ruffles on some of these more yeah. extreme than others? And okay, you'll have to name one an Italian beauty or something. Okay, <laughs> well, you, if you want it, you name it. You give it a name. There's a, that, uh, what, was this one almost white then, it's, uh, or is it dry? No, that's a spent bloom. Here's one that's fairly close to white, but not uh -huh. white. There's a whiter one down there. I see you used newspaper for mulch. <laughs> yeah, it keeps the weeds down. I, I'm sorry. It keeps the weeds down and does help to uh, hold the moisture in the soil. Part of it was, one fan was green and striped like this. The other rest of it was green like you see the solid color. That's a daylily? Yes, a daylily. So I, I cut that portion off with the root on it. I'm trying to propagate it to see if what it'll happen. Now, the reason there's two small fans there, it was all one fan had increased last year. But I found another piece of uh, the green coming back in and to make it uh, permanently that color, I have to keep cutting out the green portion of it. So I'm hoping it'll stabilize itself and, and stay all that color. Mm -hmm. that, that's real odd. Yes, it's very different, uh -huh. very different. Well, and that'll, you don't know what kind of bloom it'll be it's, or anything. It's a rose bloom. A rose? It, yeah, the parent, um, and then this, the part of the plant that was green bloomed for me, and it was a rose, very ruffled, quite a nice bloom. Mm-hmm. Well, you're going to have something that'll be your own. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can see that there are uh, all, look, now this hasn't opened today, but look, the ruffles on this little fella. Yeah. Very heavily ruffled. Now and that would be a ruffled, and then that yellow one would be uh, what you called flat or something. Is that what you call it? You mean it? the big yellow there? Yeah. That's a so-called spider type, where the petals are long and narrow. It has a little bit of a ruffle on it, but uh, it's not a real spider. A spider has to be five t the petal five times the length of the width at its widest part. So uh, we call those spider variants. There are very few real spiders. In other words, if it was an inch long, it'd have to be about six, an inch wide, rather, at the widest mm -hmm. port. Across. It'd have to be six inches long. Mm -hmm. If it was an inch and a half, close to 10 inches. So, uh, well, it's just fun. Thank you very much, Dan, for showing me your beautiful flowers. It has been a pleasure. Well, it's been our pleasure, too, and I'm so glad you could enjoy some of them with me. Thank you. This is Irma Grego from Senior Perspective. Hi, this is Irma Grego from Senior Perspective. Uh, we are now at uh, the home of Robert Chamberlain, our next guest. So I'd like for you to meet Robert Chamberlain. Good afternoon. Uh, Bob, perhaps you could tell us something about your uh, artwork uh, or your education or wherever you would like to start. Well, I'll start right after high school and um, I always liked artwork in school and I went went to uh, Art Institute of Pittsburgh for about four years evening classes but I, I didn't study uh, oil paintings or landscapes anything like that I studied advertising sign advertising which of course included silk screen work and gold leaf and lettering and uh, display work and uh, which of course was always my uh, work in, in, my, in my life and um, I didn't get interested in oil paintings until or that type of work until oh about 30 years ago I was in my mid 40s and I decided that I would try that so I started out with uh, going to adult classes in in uh, Dormont, and then we had one at, uh, in Mount Lebanon. That was in the evening, of course, evening classes. And then uh, up, Upper St. Clair had a class from Allegheny Junior 
Community College. Mm -hmm. And I went there a while. And along with going to some of the workshops once in a while that some of the well-known artists had, why, and it just kind of developed the lap way. You were telling me a little story about your bowling team or something, and uh, you well, wanted to try something different? I, I bowled in Dormont from, it was with a leg in there for about 18 years, and I was always in the upper brackets as far as my score. But it seemed as though the older I got, the, <laughs> the lower the score went. <laughs> so uh, I decided that I would spend my time otherwise doing something else and that's why I, I started with uh, with the going to the adult classes I, mm -hmm. I, I really I, I just never had the feel for doing paintings and oil paintings and so forth because the sign business is is straight colors most of it it's it's hard line painting and altogether different in fact I think Probably some of my first paintings, I always thought they looked like those paint by numbers that you buy in the <laughs> in the store, you know. But uh, it rather gradually improved. Mm -hmm. Well, I've seen some of yours, and they are really wonderful. And uh, do you uh, do you paint by uh, oh by scenery, uh, live painting, or I I think some of your paintings are done by photos. Yes. Uh, really, I've I painted from painting on the location, and uh, some photo photos that I take when I'm traveling around if I see a good subject, and sometimes I'll take old newsprints, uh, just the black and white of of, uh, of old uh, scenes and so forth years ago. Sometimes I'll take those and and uh, draw those up and paint them and put colors in the way I want it, whether I want a winter scene or summer scene. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I've seen some of your uh, historical paintings, and uh, it brings back a lot of memories. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to do that. I, I, uh, a lot of my paintings have been uh, historical and landmarks and old buildings, old barns, and, and uh, I suppose I probably painted a few covered bridges I think my wife's still waiting for one. Uh oh, you better get her one then. <laughs> uh, couple that I couple that I did paint why I sold those, so she would still like to have one above the mantle. <laughs> well she's still on the waiting list then. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, well how long have, how long have you approximately been painting then? Uh just about thirty years. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. so, well you've come a long way. Um Tell me something, uh, what's it like to paint from uh, like a photo or a newsprint? Well, of course, it, to start out with, you have to have you know, the canvas and so forth, whatever whatever size I want, want to work with, and uh, just uh, draw, sketch it on, I usually sketch it on the canvas with charcoal, you know, and... Uh, Sometimes I'll sometimes I'll make some alterations in, uh, like well of course you know I've painted McDowell's the old McDowell's barn up there uh, several times, and uh, the first time I painted it, I put a I, I was kind of disappointed that I didn't like to see that the landmark go really, you know because it'd been there for so many years, and uh, I put uh, I put a sign in on the property saying that coming soon shopping center and so forth and it was kind of satire I guess you might say you know. <laughs> but the next time I painted I, I photographed it from on the other side of Route 19 and that was shortly before they burnt the barn down but uh, the, then the next time I painted it why I put the sheep put sheep in in the, on the barn. Yeah made it look more realistic yeah, then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the building in the back? A little longer. What's the building in the back? What's the little building? The, the one over to the left? Yeah. That was one that Sam used for his garage. So the house sat in front of that, the old house. And he and I think he used that for his garage. Of course, that was a corn crib over here. And that's a corn crib on the right. Yeah. And the dark brown barn was was actually the sheep barn. That's where he kept the sheep. 
When was this raised? I mean, when did they... Do you know how long ago this? Mm. They tore it down or they burned it down? They burned it down. It's three years anyway, three I'd say. Well, whenever they Four built the new uh, yeah. house shops. Yeah, uh, I know when... I walked... I walked through it with another fellow before. In fact, I, I took I took some of the barn wood and put it in my truck and brought it back because I paint on barn wood sometimes. And I had some nice, well, there was beautiful wood in that barn. And then back in the sheep barn, when I went up on the second floor, there were still about four sheepskins hanging up there that Sam had left. Oh. Drying, you know? Uh-huh. This is the, the first high school that Peters Township had. That is the first one they ever built. They had one before. I think it was in a in a just a residence, wasn't it, or a house where that they, they'd uh, converted more or less. Yeah, but this started. was the first one, and this was uh, around 1905, 1904 when this, and this was taken from an old black photograph that uh, one of the local locals had. I think Bob Bob Smith had it, but anyway, it was. I painted it according to the what I thought the time, and then I put put some of the kids in there going to school. But um, that tree, what you see, what's left of the tree, the there is still there in that front yard. That, that tree's still trust. down there, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is this up on Bower Hill Road? No, no. Be about. Be about Just just as, just as you go through the underpass where the trail goes over top. And the house is right there on the left. It's hard. It's hard to recognize as as that school building because it's a, it's a different appearance altogether since they made a residence out of it. Oh yeah, they put a porch but, on it. But that was there till they built the high school on McMurray Road in 1929. I mean, they you know they used it. I talk like an old timer from around here, but I, I'm not. I, I moved, we moved out here in 1948. So I guess I'm a. Well, old, you're a tiny. I'm an old. I'm an old timer compared to most of the people. Yeah, I guess most people are pretty tiny. Yeah, yeah. If you've ever gone down Boyce Road, bottom of the hill, where it levels out just before you cross the. Goes over Charters Creek. Right. There's a railroad there, yeah. and this, and it's foundation. It's been an old newsprint around about 1910, and of course they had a grocery and a train station in the same building, but that was. I think I have more time on that painting than than any one that I've done so far. You know, of course, people people take time, and the train too. But um, what's the significance of '87? It was just the number of the that was on the train. You know, so um, I painted that uh, old B and O station out in Claysville. You know, it was pretty well preserved, and I had an old-time photograph of that, and I painted it. And some people out there that lived out there saw it, and their father had worked on the B and O on that line. Oh. So you know, you know who has that painting. <laughs> you don't. <laughs> no. That's the famous intersection. Right. That they're going to rebuild oh. down here, McMurray and Valley Brook Roads. That's the flour mill there. Yeah, that's the old grist mill. And that's looking uh, north towards Donaldson's Crossroads. And it was, that was before they put the uh, railroad across. The railroad ran right through here, approximately. And of course, this was uh, 19, 19, about 1910. But, um, of course, McMurray Road, come down past, well, it would be past the dairy bar would be right in here. And, of course, it was a dirt road then. My dad had a story about that, that uh, when they built the present bridge, uh, 
Daddy always says, my gosh, what are they going to do with such a big bridge <laughs> when it was built? Yeah, that's not a present bridge there either. No, no, that's good. And was, wasn't there a... It was wooden. Wasn't there a wooden bridge before this one? Yeah. Was it was, was it a covered bridge? I don't know if it was covered or not, but no. it was a wooden bridge. But I, I heard it got washed out one time. Yeah. Mm. That one I just painted, I put it together more or less. And, well, just um, line. Yeah. Um, this winter, too, I got kind of, I got on a kick of western scenes. Because Doris and I were out there in 78 or 79, and I photographed a bunch out in Arizona. So I did western scenes this past winter, too. Oh, okay. I don't have them here. They're, they're on display. That's this little one-room Amish school and painted it, and then I put the children in there. But uh, all those little one-room mommy schools are in perfect condition. I mean, they're not fancy, but they're, they're in good condition. And that painting won, uh, I put that in a show, and it won uh, Best of Show. Are they usually wood or are they brick? Look Both. Like brick. That yeah. looks like brick. That's a, that was a brick school, you know. But there's a lot of them that are frame, you know, and mm -hmm. so forth. Well, Bob, I see here on a table that you have quite a few, and quite an assortment of ribbons. Perhaps you could tell us something about them. I've, I've been in, of course, I get into uh, the, the year, and um, I think from, well, from almost the year after, do oil paint. And um, so since then, I have, have been to different shows with different locations, and I spoke well, there are 22 ribbons here. Wonderful. And, uh, What's a, a jury award? Well, I, I, in the, so of course, there's always a best of show. That's the, and then from there, go, from there they have uh, usually the first prize and then the, the jury, jury awards and uh, some of the shows are uh, have different titles for the awards, and some, and there's always honor, honorable mentions. And um, a jury award is, is is rather a high high ranking. And then I have several jury awards here, and some first prize and well, honorable. The uh, jury award then is that done by other artists that? No, uh, it's, it's, they're all by the same judge. Oh. Whoever's judging the show, mm -hmm. and um, I know most of the time, whenever I if I get into a show where the judge is from, well, say say he's a college professor or any judge, not not necessarily. Well, I wouldn't even say a college professor because they 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 have different likings. But it, it, a lot of times, I don't care what you say, it depends on if the judge is usually, he, he has been an artist. And if he does abstracts, I'm not going to win a ribbon <laughs> because they, they just naturally, they, they tend to like the, you know. Well, that's not their field. That's right, Raven. you know. And, and, and I can understand that. But um, it's... Uh, it's interesting, though. It's always it's fun to get, get competitive. In, yeah, it's fun to compete and see yeah, what you end up with. Yeah, right. So um, it's but it's it's been a lot of fun. I get uh, I don't, I don't do any painting in the summertime because I'm usually outside in the yard or up in the garden. But in the wintertime, I can get completely carried away and lost. Mm -hmm. Especially on a subject that I like, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, behind us here, I see you have uh, a news newspaper, old newspaper print. Yeah, I haven't any idea where it is, and of course, naturally, it was black and white, and I decided to make a winter scene out of it. Oh, you put the winter scene in yourself? That wasn't in on the photo, no. then. Uh -oh. Oh. No. No. The winter scene wasn't there, and the, the fence line wasn't there either. Well, that all adds to the, to the excuse I, I, me, the I painting. Don't, I don't even know. Or not, you know, because 
But I always, I always wanted to paint an old faded out red barn, so. Well, barns are always red. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's a, lot of, a lot of them are just old plain brown barns because they never painted them, you know. <laughs> well, I want to thank you very much uh, for being with us here today. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was very enjoyable, and we really were painting. Um, this is Irma Grego from Senior's Perspective.